two suggested stay-at-home drills and an older drill which have been previously put up in, in the coaching area of Facebook. I can't pronounce the surnames of the coaches, one Indian and one Dutch, so I'll write them in the description. It is not the purpose of this video to be critical of the players who are seen dribbling, but to compare different dribbling styles and the effects of set, different setups when it comes to laying out cones, etc. The boy here starts with almost straight legs, leaning over the ball, head over it. Um, you can't see his face, so he's not looking up where he's, to where he's going. It's possible that he doesn't see the cone or the paper cup, whatever it is, until he's almost on top of it. He's taking very small steps, matching very small. The ball is being wiped with the face of the stick, slid across the ball top at an angle very often. The stick is also being taken away from the ball a considerable distance, much more than it should be. This is the point at which an attacker will be made if a player was dribbling in this manner. Slow down that stick work and look at it again. Look how little the ball has been moved. The stick is just brushing across it. Then we come to the part where he starts to lift the ball over the shoes. First time in the drill that the ball has actually been moved backwards. It's easy to see that the placement of the cups is almost irrelevant. It has no bearing at all on the style of stick work. The cones are not being bypassed and gone round efficiently with the least amount of effort. That style of play or dribbling is what my next dribbler might call old style. This from a mature player who is obviously a much stronger. Note how he goes over the, past the ball, over the top of it, pulls it back onto his strong side. The ball is being pushed and pulled with strong right arm movements. There's no tapping of the ball at all. I don't accept that this is modern hockey and the old style of tapping the ball from side to side has no place in modern hockey at all. Um, players like Rui Soldano, John French, Satinda Kiha and many others I was familiar with in the 1970s played in a combination of these two styles. But none of them wasted energy by moving the ball when they didn't have to. This third dribbler is being dominated by the cones because his feet go where the ball has already been. And as he goes down the chicane, the ball gets closer to his feet and it becomes more upright. As he goes into the free loop, posture becomes much better and the ball is way out in front of him again. And then he has the same problem the young boy had with lifting the ball.